Welcome everyone, welcome. Looks like the drivers are starting to ready up now. And we'll go through some of the stats and the statistics going into this race. So our driver's champion going into round 14 here at RPL here at Mexico is Glitch. He's currently leading the uh, driver's t championship by a gap of 38 points. These guys do a traditional F1 points, so 25, 18, so forth, all the way down to one in uh, the, the top 10. Uh, second is Dismal. Uh, he's got that 38 uh, point gap that he needs to start cutting down on. And then Zat is in that top three spot. Davies in that P4 slot at 99, so out of the 100 point margin. But then it's very close down the rest of the grid. When it comes to the Constructors Championship, we have Mercedes at 232. There's a team of Glitch and AT Mobile. And then we have Dismal and a better bloke in Alfa Romeo at 247 points. So coming into the loading of the screen here. We are about to come into some epic driving here at Mexico. Uh, let me get up some track knowledge because like, I don't have any knowledge off the top of my head. I know it's just like track numbers. They don't have anything like names like compared to other the other big name tracks. But so looking like our contenders when we look up qualifying times is our basically our top three. Davies is popping in and around, but it's mainly our top three. Uh, Disney has had a lot of not starting races, but when he does race, he is getting a P1. And on the screen right now, we have a full grid of 20 drivers, and we also have a wet qualifying session. So we have a full wet qualifying session by the looks of it. It might be Inters. And let's start tackling on some of the good stuff here. So I wonder... Who's going to make the jump here? A few new names are on the board compared to what I've got here on the screen. So, I think the drivers that are missing out, I would assume it's Fook Trot is down the bottom here for uh, a Williams. Oh, no, he's in. Uh, who is currently... So, we have a missing Racing Point driver. So, I've got to switch to the Constructors. So, Racing Point, we have Dakar and then Willem. So, which one are missing? So, we're missing uh, Dakar there and it's taken by youtube.com uh, slash and I don't know what the rest of the name is because it's cut off uh, you need to maybe just do like maybe YT or something just to shorten it off but we have our first car and it looks like it's a Williams and here's the first car going out on the intermediate tires now we don't know the conditions for the race yet but it looks like we have a bit of a international, like a, I think this is like a global series in a way. So we might see some glitching here and there, uh, especially like looking at the cars. But we'll have, we'll stay on board with Shane here as we come through. Yeah, we've only got what we've got. Oh, in this game compared to the last seat, last game, we've uh, got an extra DRS, which is what Codemasters missed out on, but. The drivers will be missing out on the DRS until uh, it, until it's actually bright. So we might we might actually have a wet Mexico race. It's uh, I've only had like one or two in the history of my commentating or driving career here. It's not often it rains here, but when it does, man, it, it's such a shocking time. Like through those S's, it's quite difficult. Through turns uh, nine, ten, and eleven, you just you just have to be so complacent. So we'll stay on board with Shane to give us our first. Uh, lap here at Mexico now we have a very tricky little sector here in sector three uh, at the uh, stadium sector and he's try he's a bit gingerly on the power as he you can see him trying to fight for grip and away we go here for our first lap here at Mexico and in the intermediate weather so he's flying down this uh, one of the longest straights in F1 and he comes into a very heavy braking zone into turn one using those curbs very nicely and using all of the track available and he pulls into a right and then a quick left hander we have already got sector three yellows probably cars just slowing down in traffic and he cuts across those curbs fantastically through turns two and three and it's another little long oh we have a oh no it's clunk it's clunky boy he's absolutely retired on the before he can even finish a lap front left tires absolutely been ripped off we'll use our uh our replay system here so we have a replay system that we can use oh my god it, it's completely put me sideways on uh following this <laughs> hold up as we still have shane trying to complete his lap unfortunately clunky boy's already coming in and said bruh 
bra moment indeed. You'll be starting at the back of the grid. So we still have Shane going through the uh, 9, 10, and 11 through the S's. And he's absolutely obviously purpled it, being that he's the first car on track. But uh, we don't know if the weather is clearing up. We, we have no idea what the weather, weather report is going to be because commentators are just not allowed to have that knowledge. Now into the final turn, the double right-hander. Now you want to be still gingerly on the power because you don't want to spin the car. And he doesn't go for the short route, but obviously a 128.5 is the time to beat so far here at Mexico. Edward is coming out in, oh, we always glitch. Who is our driver's champion so far with a full second? No, only five tenths different. No, a 1.5 seconds difference. Compare. Uh, the, the, the race is dry. Okay, so this means these drivers are using a, uh, a dry setup. Uh, and they'll be trying to keep the car under control until the, uh, basically, throughout qualifying. Because you don't want to do a, a wet setup and then race in a wet setup. It's just going to be an awful time. We also looks like we have a, a Ferrari that looks like to be a bit lost. Did he have, was he a bit spun around there, Edward? Or was he just letting everyone go? No, we also have an Alpha letting everyone go. Yeah, he's invalidated. He's also got a car right up his ass. And I think that's Jake. Yeah, he had to he had to try and get past TTV, a better bloke. Now, let's see what Jakey can produce as he's trying to fit. I'm pretty sure he's starting his lap now. So let's have a look at what Jake from uh, Renault. Oh, no, no, he was finishing his lap. Oh, dearie me, I do apologize. A 130, so a 130.9. So there is a huge difference between the top three, as you can see here with Glitch, Sweepy and then Zade all in the top three spot of a 127s and it's an eight tenth difference from glitch and sweepy uh, but that's just the first lap on inters but usually on the intermediates you can have uh like six laps of fuel in and you can just keep producing laps because you just got to get used to the conditions here and obviously the more cars that are out on track the the drier the line can kind of be so you can still get a faster uh response towards everything now we'll stay we'll have a look to see if glitch is on another lap and he isn't. He's on a cooldown. Let's see what Shane's doing. Shane has actually produced another another strong lap, jumping into P2, and he looks like he's on another lap straight away. So Shane looking very good under these wet conditions so far with a 127.8. But then Zay comes in and beats him by not not just any time, but 0 0.006 or 7 of a second. That is that is a huge huge difference. <laughs> I'm really kidding. It's literally nothing. It's literally just putting your front nose in just before. It's just to have a longer car and you've got the same. Oh, glitch. Offing to go for the off-road there as he's made a huge mistake and he'll invalidate that time. So he'll... Oh, he decides to invalidate more and use the rest of the track to set himself up for the next one. Oh, and then Desnal coming in with a 126. So the track looks like it's getting a little bit more controllable for these drivers. And Clunky Boy has left the session... He didn't just crash out. He actually decided to leave the session. Uh, it could have been words from upstairs, potentially. But... Sorry, let me just keep checking stuff. Uh, my game crashed. I'm joining again. Okay, no stress. I'm going to have to quit chat on my phone. I don't know. I, I keep looking to my side. Let's see what we've got around here. So we stay on board with Disney here as he's on another lap. And let's see if he can improve his time. And he's invalidated through turns 9 and 10. And in the pits these guys go. So... Uh, Kate is a person that I commentate for in the FNL. He's one of the top two drivers. Uh, he's coming second, oh no, first in the drivers' championship, and he's missed two races overall. And he says he's going to miss next week's double header at uh, with the FNL. So, uh, quite to see what his pace difference is like uh, with the RPL. And Clunky Boy has rejoined, so that's nice to see. I thought it was a very short session indeed. Now. I would like to mention with the team Red Bull, with Davies OC and Alex OC, they it's not their actual names. It's just I haven't changed anyone's nickname from when I was hosting some lobbies. So 
They're just Davies and Alex. Well, Alex could be Alex 90Z64, I'm pretty sure. But he's pulled out of his lap. Let's see what Edward's doing. Edward is also on a lap by the looks of it. He might pull out of it into turns two and three. No, he's still going for it. As it seems to be the weather's calming down just the smallest amount. Um, my game reset all of my settings, so I had to change everything back to my rip uh, to save my team. Yeah, unlucky. Just one of those things. It's just your luck's just not going your way, but you might have some luck when it comes to the dry race. A lot of safety cars come through here, and a lot of time penalties come here, through, especially through sector two. Getting caught out, just drifting the car a little bit too wide and running off the white line can give yourself just those those time penalties. Uh, horse can drive has decided to retire. He, did he crash? Give me an alpha. Oh, he's absolutely binned it at the start finish line. He must have just. Uh, surely he wasn't trying to go into the pits there. Wow, wait. I just want to get off. Jeez. Jeez Louise. There we go. All right, let me just check one second. Yeah, I think that's good. But yeah, he's absolutely rimmed it. At the start finish line, he must have just thrown down the power just to finish that lap or to start a lap. And he's trying to catch the car and he slammed the car into the wall. So we have two retirees and we still have eight minutes to go here at this session here at Mexico. Rev glitches still exist. And we have a better time, a 1.26.2. So it's definitely getting better for these drivers. Here at Ass, they've taken a 1-3 so far. And the second driver, uh, his number one driver is in the pits currently. Uh, the reason why you can tell the difference between the number one driver and the number two is the yellow top on top of their car, if you didn't know. So the yellow indicates the number two driver. So, Disney, what is his response going to be? He's purpled sector two. He's got a slight bit of traffic here with Shane. Hopefully he's got enough distance so it's not going to impede his lap too much. Oh, that could have also that could have put him off a little bit. Maybe he wasn't sure if he was going to pull to the side. And he's slowly, look at the throttle inputs, just not even half percent there. And he's just getting over 60, full throttle, feels this power, and he's already beaten the time at 126.03. And he's sectored one, two, and three by the looks of it. It's one of so this track is just getting a lot drier for these guys. Obviously the rain has calmed down a little bit, and he's completely out of ERS to match. So let's have a look at Glitch. He set the best time early on in the session next to Shane. Coming into a hard braking zone to turn one. He's got a bit of traffic in front of him, but hopefully these drivers know how to pull off to the side, especially in these wet conditions. This is where the second DRS zone would be available to the drivers, triggering both one and two. Oh, a bit of a lock up on that front left. He's got a driver that looks like it might impede his lap overall. We've got a lot of traffic up a front. Oh, there's a bit of a parking lot here. Hopefully that McLaren knows what he's doing. Nice and close, but he doesn't get in the way too much there. So now we've got more traffic up ahead throughout these S's here. Very Silverstone-esque through here. And he's not touching the curbs. Oh, that looked like a bit of a drift there, fighting the grip. And then he cuts that corner perfectly. So he rides that. This is where the third and final DRS bit of the track is purple sector two. So he's feeling the pace here in the Mercedes. Uh, there was last game, you could absolutely cut and ride off into that green sector there and you wouldn't be uh, picked up for track extending. And a lot of uh, professional drivers did that through uh, qualifying to gain like at least two to three tenths. It was crazy. And he's actually going to take the narrow line, a lot more wet than the racing line. He catches that inside curb and he's falling down. He's definitely just caught the car there. Oh, and we've got some ghosting, so uh, no car's going to go through him and absolutely destroy him. Does a little flick spin there. But he's opted to go for the sweaty eSports line, going for the narrow, but the dr but the dry line is where you're going to gain all that grip. So that's definitely cost him there, trying to produce something like that. Let's further down, see what we have. We have the other Mercedes, RPL.Mobile. I thought his name was just A2Mobile, but maybe he's done a name change from what I'm seeing from the notes I've been given. Now let's see if he's going to improve his time. Oh, he's absolutely caught. The guy's going to do what happened with the Renault, with the runner, and he has. That front wing has been absolutely ripped off. So to produce the last couple huge amount of tents in the last turn, 
The drivers have opted to absolutely destroy their car in the process. Oh, let's have a look at the instant replay in the top right corner, ladies and gentlemen. You can see him just putting in the throttle, catching it, but then just double flicks again into the wall. Lucky a front tire wasn't ripped off there. I, I might be thinking it may be reduced damage by the first, by first looking at it. But maybe he was just very lucky with full. Is there any other driver? Oh, we have a driver that's cur uh, currently started his lap. He might have uh, just going for his second lap overall. We have four minutes left of this qualifying session here. 18 minutes that the drivers have to set the best time possible. And Dismal has done the best. He's uh, compared to Sweepy with the two Hasses and then the uh, Mercedes that was split by the other Alfa Romeo. The two Red Bulls are still figuring out their strategies with 11th and 14th. Same with Ferrari, 9th and 12th. And when you look at the Drivers' Championship, you can kind of see why. I think Edward has subbed in for Sass without I'm looking at. But Sass's overall points were very average. And we have Cascade, or Cade, who's usually 6. Oh, he's, his average is definitely finishing in ninth position. Wow, wait. The differences in leagues, differences in performances. So let's have a look at our current P3 driver. So, he's purpled sector two. This is looking like a, a front row finish. We still have three minutes to go and this is where the best times will produce. He revs out in, in, in gear four there and he comes through the final parts of the stadium sector. Everyone's got their umbrellas or only a handful of people. And he comes across. Are we going to see a, the same thing that we've seen with other drivers? Putting down the throttle for the extra two tenths. And he keeps it timid and he only goes up one position. And he's purpled sector two and three, but not sector one. So a 126-1 is the time to beat if you want to get into P2 on that front row. And look at Glitch. He's coming out. And he's going to probably set a faster time. He's, he's improved every single lap that he's been given to him. But let's go further down. And let's have a look at some McLaren. So the McLaren not using as much. Oh, no, there he goes, using all the track available for him. But he's not staying on that dry line as much as others. And look at the throttle input. About one third all the way through, turns two and three. And then he's going flat. There's no overtaking mode available for these drivers. Not like last game. It's only hot lap or nothing. So you can't really just stay in, like, mode two and have, like, oh, oh sorry, mode one, which is medium now and have like a better drag from the tires instead of a lot of wheel spin from this hot lap mode. So you can see the rev limiter flicking up and down. It's the tires just trying to fight grip and just revving out. I think that's gonna be an invalidation. No, he actually stay gets away with it. Oh, it looks like he's fighting a drift. Doesn't want to snap too much with that steering wheel and he keeps it. Coming into the hard braking zone into the sweeping right hander and let's see if he goes wide. No, he stays within track limits. Let's see if he's going to improve his time. It's a 128.2. And we have a, a new pole position from Zez. 126.3. Oh, my dearie me. that He's done it again. <laughs> Instead of... He's going into the pit, so he invalidated. He was only, what, nine milliseconds difference the first time he's beaten Dezel. Oh, no, I think it was glitched the first time. And now he's just beaten it by an absolute hair. This is some qualifying session here at RPL. Now let's see if the top four can reply. Got a bit of a traffic uh, jam here in sector two. Sheesh! I know, it's so close here. Let's see if he gets invalidated through here. Oh! Just flicks the car enough. Plenty of power as well. I think he might improve sector two. It looks good. It's purple. Doesn't go wide. I have a feeling we might get into the 125s. Demon has left the session. Hopefully he can rejoin before the race starts. He's got a bit of traffic. It could help him. I think a 125 is on the table. And it definitely is a 125.7. Absolutely demolished the time. And he's got time for one more. He's absolutely timed this perfectly. And he's getting a drag from the Williams. Let's see what Glitch can do. And he finishes his time. And he jumps into P3. 
Sweppy, he's got to stay there. Hass has got to stay there. So it looks like our pole, yeah, our pole position, unless we have like a huge upset from like maybe RT Gove or Edward coming through. No, uh, uh, Edward has reti uh, not retired, invalidated his time. Now how's Carrot has been holding back something this whole session. Let's have a look. We have a lot of people just finishing their laps. But our top 10 is looking mighty close. Tents are a game changer. Tents are more than just one position here. Oh, he revs out a little bit into third. Looks like we're finishing into a 126. Oh, we're going into the sevens. But he has improved and he's jumped to P6 next to his teammate. A 127.2, so an improvement nonetheless into that P6 slot. Now, where's our uh, global is going to be taken into the pits? Where's Shane? He started off in P1 and 2. Oh, he's flicked into the pits. Back tires ripped off. No, he survives. <laughs> but he finishes 12th. Global goes in, and that is our qualifying session here at RPL round 14 here at Mexico. It was literally Hass, one Alpha and a, and a one Merc, just rotating the top spot. And for a wet session with dry setups, they've absolutely smashed it. The times that you would usually see in, in the dry is probably a, a one fourteen, I think. If you're a late, a, high, a lower number. <laughs> But that is our pole position. Let's see what his usual consistency is. So, but his consistency is every time he's rocked up, he's won the race or gotten a podium. Only one P3, one P2, and the other ones are just P1s. It looks like he misses every second week, but this is his first time coming into a back-to-back -back race. <laughs> but yes, he comes in and claims P1 by two tenths of a second, and then Zed and Glitch. And Sweppy. So Singapore absolutely locking out the first to fourth without one Aussie splitting them both. I don't know that flag off by heart. We have a few Aussies. Uh, Korea? North? South? That's not Leith. Dude, this is like a, this is a whole new Geo class for me. Cyprus. Ah, okay. Cyprus flag. The more you know. My flag knowledge is extended by my knowledge of FIFA. Anytime I wanted to make a green leg, uh, green links or hyperlinks, I had to know the flag. So I'm very good. F in the chap, P20, repel. Mm. Three turns, I think, clunk. So as the drive is ready up, they, they jump straight into it. I would assume these guys are doing a formation lap. So let's just have a look at some stuff just to see if I've catched up with anything. All right, so we have the formation lap. There we go. Definitely a formation lap. So as the drivers go around, we'll actually have a look and to see what tire selection these guys have done. Because since it was a wet qualifying session, we'll be able to see what tires they have. Oh no, that's not the right one. Position change, give us tires. So, looking at the tire selection, we have what is followed by two softs, a medium, soft, medium, medium. So it's a bit of a split here between the drivers. Now, the softs, if you go soft, uh, you, but you're getting fresh tyres. I know it's like a soft, soft, medium, or a soft, medium, medium race. Uh, medium hards uh, are a bit of a stretch. But what I'm feeling is at least two safety cars. Two kind of formula e style yeah soft soft medium or soft soft hard the softs are just 
dangerously quick here, especially through the S's. But yeah, it's definitely a two-stop here. Uh, you can't really stretch it out like others. But we have our replay mod enabled, as we saw during our qualifying session. So we'll be able to replay the action for a good 20 seconds every time there is something up. And if there is two massive things that happens, I might as well click it again. We can have a replay inside of a replay. Yes, thank you to the eight live people that are in right now, about to watch round 14 here at Mexico. As we have our pole set off from Alfa Romeo, start lining up the grid here. As the AIs slot them into the right position. Let's have a look. Surely I can get a front on camera. I, I, I guess. <laughs> That's better. The cars auto align as they do. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five red lights here at Mexico. And away we go here. Silent start. A lot of tires are pushed up. And we're seeing instant movement there from the Haas to go onto the outside line. Now this is when the toe comes in. It's not a huge mistake coming into first position, but look at the movement of the cars. Oh, we have a Ferrari! Into the wall there. Was that Edward? No, that was uh, Cascade, I think. Getting flicked by another car. Instant replay on that start. Instantly into the wall there, trying to fishtail his way through the pack. Definitely lost an M plate there, and he has left M plate gone. Huge lockup there by the Mercedes. Battle from the exchange from the top two. Haas has already gotten to the lead. A huge lockup trying to go from the around the outside. Sweppy trying to hold the position. Side by side through here is going to be an end result. Surely. And he gets the move done around the outside for Haas. Sweppy, what a move. But Dezel is not holding that position lightly. He's going to fight back. No DRS in the first three laps. And it starts to calm down a little bit from those two. He's not going to see a dive bomb. Not at all. But the two Mercs are fighting out. Let's him go. He's not the fastest softs compared to Glitch's mediums. He's got a bit of a, a bit of an issue there. Suggestion came from Ghost there to put in the top right corner. I followed up and did it exactly the way he wanted it. I even made it bigger, more real estate to use. Who cares about sectors? As we have the Ferrari going into the pitch straight away, we might even see him retire. I don't see. Wait, DRS enabled. Lap three. What? What? Wait, what? Wait, wasn't it just one lap? How's it jumped to three? What kind of glitch is this? Okay, lap two. Let's go. That's hype as fuck. Instant DRS. Let's go. <laughs> Let's have a look at the battles. Now now the whole timing glitches out. I don't know who to follow. Sends it down the inside. Shane battles it with the Alpha Tauri. Softs versus mediums. Williams versus Tauri. Oh, I, I don't know where to follow. Blue flags being waved. Yeah, I just don't. Oh, dude. This is such a chaotic game. As the, t as the time sheets balanced it out. Because we have Cascade in P1. And he's done a stop. He's physically stopped. It says... Bruh. What's going on here? I'm going to change. I just want... Yeah, that's probably fixed it. No, it, it definitely hasn't. Oh, dude. So let's keep, let's just stay on board with the top three. At least we know they're close to each other. But look at the drag. DRS has already popped up. But look, lap three has stayed in the top left corner. He's, he, but he hasn't turned it on. It's definitely available to these drivers. But I'm seeing, I haven't seen why they haven't been able to off. Horse can drive, can't drive. He gets a five second time penalty for his woes spinning into the pit lane. He gets a better runoff. DRS is popping up, but they're not available but it is closed. Easily gets the work done, but it looks like he... Oh, he sends it down both drivers! Now that is going to be a dangerous move, but he's trying to get the move stuck. I don't think he was expected to get both moves done. Shane, three seconds already on lap three, so one extension per lap. Let's see those heavy braking one more time. So we look at the top right of our screen, ladies and gentlemen, and he gets the first move done comfortably, but then he just has the biggest balls and sends it again, locks up the front left. Oh, wow. So Sweepy, three seconds as well in the top three. That's not going to be a very good time for him. RP Mobile looking at Edward here. 
break so much later there. I think Edwards on the medium compound. He is so every lap that Edwards stays in front of him is he enjoys his time a lot more. Camera view from our stadium sector here as they go underneath. And we have that is a McLaren. And he's into the wall, ghosting. So he chucks that baby in reverse, Daniel Ricciardo style, and just sends it into reverse. Loses only one position for his woes, and he goes into the T-Mobile. Here we go. RPL Mobile. Look at the DRS. ERS is down to zero. Keeps that move nice and late. Let's see if he holds it. Big lock up there from Edward. Is he going to send it down the inside? No, he's going to hold that position because he now gets DRS. No, it's sorry. It's a double DRS detection zone for turn one. So he gets to use it one more time and gets to fly away from Edward. Is there any more defensive blockings that these guys have to do to against each other? No, but we have the top two battling it out. In Sector 2, this is where you get the most time penalties here through throughout the Sector 2 area because you can just pull your car a little bit too wide and not realize how far you've actually pulled the car. But the two houses are battling out. Hopefully they're communicating because the more they just battle each other, uh, Desnil is actually just going to fly away. Look, 1.3 seconds already because they're mucking around in Sector 2. So definitely no team orders here. Edward, three seconds because he's trying to defend for his life. Actually, no, he's trying to gain time back on that fast Mercedes there on the soft compound tire as we see the two houses still trying to figure it out definitely a K-Mag and Grosjean situation no team orders here but let's see if they can tow each other back into position or are they got to fight on the start finish straight so he's using the tow not using overtake his teammate doesn't look like he's slotting them easily but he does let him go. He actually, oh, he cuts that corner very nicely. Actually cuts the corner again nicely. So he's actually gonna get him a better run, but because it's a double detection zone, the person in front is getting DRS. And we're gonna see Edward trying to potentially go for a move. No, oh, Mobile's got the, uh, gotta make a move back on him. And he does too, heavy braking lockup. Look, ripping that front wing off, forcing him out wide. Look at me, cuts the track completely there. Oh, we have a we have a blind side. Oh, huge blind side there from the Williams on the Mercedes. And because of ghosting, they can kind of recover a lot quicker than usual. So we'll have a look back because we saw Edward getting forced wide. He decides to cut the track and maybe from the rejoin, the uh, Mercedes driver maybe put took his foot off the throttle and it's rimmed him into the wall there. And then, yeah, Maybe um, the Williams was just caught into it. Maybe he was just taking the wide line to get away from it all. Let's have a look here. As, oh, late breaking there. Richie was getting that door absolutely closed on him there by mobile. Three second time penny for Jaco. So let's see what the Tauri can do. It looks like the Mercedes might be injured. Let's see if we can have a look here from the uh, com box. As he is, he's going into the pits. So he defended that move for absolutely no reason as he's going into the pits. So let's have a look down the order as Desnal is actually pulled four seconds from the top two. So the Haas team are fighting out too much. So now we see Alex against the Renault. Oh, bit of a lock up, staying away from Jake there. He didn't want to hit that side pod and spin out, but a lot better of an exit, but he doesn't get DRS. Jake gets DRS though as he gets to just fly away from him. Where's Davies at? Just chilling in P12. Let's have a look further down the order here. As these drivers are most likely pitted. As Alpha, uh, not Alpha, sorry, Racing Point are having a quite a poor evening uh, today, so. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I just give people new names. That's all I'm here for. I'm not even that good. So let's have a look at glitch shoes. He's trying to cut through the pack here. When did Shane get in front of him? That's a question I want to ask. Because Shane and Edward have gotten past him in one point. It's trickled down. There's not much of a battle so far and we've only up to lap seven. I don't know if it's a real lap seven or we're up to lap 10. Because honestly, we had DRS enabled from like lap two. And it just triggered to lap three. So it's super confusing. As we have uh, Foxtrot in the uh, in the pits there. Ooh, Jake trying to not get caught up there with Alex there going down the inside into turn one. And with those softs, he doesn't look like he's very confident with the power. But this Williams and Ferrari have been balancing it out all the way through. 
So Shane will get DRS in this sector two to three. But this dirty air through here is such an issue to, for these drivers. Let's see what he can produce. Yeah, look at the difference there. It's just the dirty air is an absolute killer. But it's all about that turn one, the advantage of just being inside DRS. Oh, good catch though by Shane. It's literally make an overtake turn one, use DRS again for free, and then just get overtaken again the next lap. It's basically what it is, because we're going to see the easiest overtake here in F1 history because of how long this straight is. And goodbye. Yep, goodbye. Uh, sector two, we have some yellows. Oh, it looked like it maybe just slowed down. It was definitely a Renault. But Re that Renault is definitely gaining. Well, how have I teleported there? I was definitely on that Renault. Huh, odd. Is there anything else so far? Yeah, RP. Oh, look at this uh, DRS and uh, tow line here. Is a better bloke. He's about to get consumed by maybe both drivers. He makes it three wide, sends it, gets them both comfortably. What a absolute bullet of a move there from RP, uh, RPL Mobile. And then we've got these drivers going side by side. But what a late move. It's it's like he just made that decision on the spot. He's like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to send it. Because of the late breaking with the softs against those mediums. And then because uh, the alpha driver was on the outside, he wouldn't be able to defend at all. But what a move. And now he's away. Already pulled 1.4 seconds because these two are sculpting still. And Kate is getting three seconds. So yeah, time penalties are starting to stack up when they start defending. Here we go, Edward versus Shane, still going on. Glitch, hunting them down. Every time they battle per lap, he's catching up. He's nearly within, he actually has DRS. It was outside the one on the telemetry into turns two, three, but he keeps it going. Alex with his first set of three second time penalties. Yeah, one point nearly into that DRS. Looks like he's missing out in this sector. And the Haas team are still squabbling. But what can we say about uh, Destel's uh, consistency? His last five, his last ten races, I should say, is basically a, he's not showing up or he's winning. Oh, he did DNF in Hungary, though. He's only per, he's only DNF. Sector two, that is a McLaren. Is that who I think it is again? It is. He's absolutely revving the fuck out of it. He might get disqualified for driving the wrong way for so long. Burn up those tires, baby. Flick spin. Hopefully he doesn't get too much in the way there. Ghosting I'm not a huge fan of. Just because if you make a mistake, you should collect some other people as well. <laughs> like, it's just ghosted. Oh, and then also because they're back markers as well, you can just drive through them. Not not the best, like, not the best thing, I feel. Some drivers need to learn when to pull to the side. Surely he's not sending it down the inside here. He is not. But they're still just battling throughout this race. And Alpha Romeo is just loving it. He's eight seconds away. The only way they can bring this back... Oh, five seconds for corner cutting. He's trying to get that car back into the pits as fast as possible, either to retire. Don't know what their retirement rule is like. If they... Oh, and then five seconds speed in the pit line. He has. He's going to retire if he's doing that. I will be shocked if he's staying to race. So, here we go. Another easy move. Oh, as his teammate goes into the pits first. Let's see what Edward can do then. On oh, Shane. Such an easy move. There's just... No energy needed for this. Unless maybe the driver behind just sends it back and returns fire. Because you get DRS twice. Clunky boy, three seconds for his uh, troubles there. In, up in 17th. Oh. 
Any other battles? Yes, yeah, coming out of the pits. So he was the first one to step, and then Sweppy followed him in on the mediums now. And he's already gone past Richie. And because of that eight seconds he had between pits, and he's already gone fast, his first, like, traffic driver, it's got to be so easy for him. I reckon once Sweppy goes into the pits, we'll be seeing a 10-second gap. That is my estimated guess here. Potentially more. As he goes into the pit, so let's have a look at the telemetry and we'll stay on board just to see the difference. Oh, Shane gets five seconds worth of... Uh, he has to serve that next time he goes into the pit, so that's absolutely going to ruin his race in a way. So let's have a look at the time difference. As he's got to jump past Sweppy. And let's see the difference. Yep. Yeah. Actually, no, he's still very consistent. Oh, no, he's going further down. He's got a lot of traffic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's more than 10. And look at the traffic that he has to get past because of this. And his teammate, obviously going in first, has overcutted him. Undercutted him, I should say. Sector 2, yellows. Ferrari. Edward. What has happened here, son? That fr You have a orange wing, my friend. That, that is basically nothing. Just go and cut every corner because you have a very fast car coming and that is the, effectively the leader of the Grand Prix. Oh, not the best, not the best timing, but it's fine. It is fine. So let's keep going down. So is Glitch got a pit? No, he's on mediums. He'll be going for some time. Shane versus Alex. He's got five seconds to serve into the pits. Alex is in. He started on those mediums. And he's just going to let him go comfortably. As another driver gets three seconds worth of time penalty. Everyone's slowly stacking them up. Only a handful of people actually don't have a time penalty. And the back half of the grid literally half a lap like well, not half a lap but nearly a, like start to finish sector worth of time difference between them and halal jamal has absolutely just slaughtered the ferrari there through the start finish and he'll have drs once again and just pull the, and just extend that lead against him and hopefully breaking that uh drs toe that is that is available for the drivers within the one second mark Let's see what a better bloke can produce for us here. Touch your lock up. But look at the time difference. We'll go to the leader. But yeah, look at that. Well, we, we have like two different races going on. Well, effectively three. We just have the leader doing his own thing. And he still has to pit. So we'll have a look at the tyre strategy. And most drivers have decided to pit for the mediums. Some drivers on fresh softs, they most likely started on the medium compound. And we have Clunk on the hards. And our final driver on the softs. But let's have a look at Mobile. As he's trying to catch up against Halal, but because of that DRS, it's very difficult for him. We'll stay on board with Shane for the meantime because he's only four tenths away. Same with Schweppy or Swep Skewy. I don't know. Let's just go with whatever I give him anyway. Because we have a bit of a toe here. These two alphas have finally caught back up and they've been battling this whole race. And we'll probably see Shane try and pull off a double move.
Sector one yellows. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? That was a that was a Merc? That was a McLaren? Done it again. Maybe did I catch it? I just glanced down for one second. As we see a move down the inside here, inside, outside. No, he was just giving them the uh, all the width in the world. So he just went off to give them space. As he actually got the move done there. What an incredible move in that sector two right lefter. So I thought there was a crash there at turn one. I thought I was sleeping on the job. Oh, three seconds worth. He's trying to pull, build that gap up and he's pulled another three seconds. So maybe if we have time, maybe hopefully there's a safety car to bring all these drivers in. Three seconds for Richie as well. Wow. So Shane is showing his race pace. Oh, he's following the drag. Pull side by side. He's got to defend. No, he's comfortably got it. There's no way he deep dives into turn one. He doesn't. And his teammates slowly folding away. He's, uh, it looks like the pace on the mediums just isn't for him. But he got, he has DRS again, so it might cut down the time a little bit for him. Glitch is trying to stay with the leader, but he's on those old mediums. There's no way he's trying to extend these for any much longer. Uh, but te oh, he's definitely doing the uh, two softs at the end, so he'll he will definitely uh, take uh, fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Because uh, obviously the, the fuel load difference is such a massive, uh, I mean, longer the race, less fuel at the end. It's quick hot tire, lighter car, faster lap times. Just adds up. Oh, we have a little bit of a battle here. See if anything spicy happens with these guys. But we'll stay on board with Edwin in between as he just pulls three seconds. It's very easy here to start pulling up time because you can just, just pull the car off these white lines. Oh, he looked tempted to go down the inside there of RPL Mobile. As we have our first retiree, he's retired in the pits safely, obviously speeding in the pit lane before doing so. The absolute classic. As I think both drivers is going to grab mobile here before the DRS line. Well, let's see. Three wide here at Mexico. And it quickly folds into... Oh, a nice squeeze down the inside. He didn't want to give it up. Huge braking zone into a lockup and he gets the inside line those softs are so much more grip and he keeps that move what a phenomenal battle into turn ones two and three and they have to battle again edward's trying to find a move goes down the inside locks up and he gets the move done into turn three wow wee what a move richie's got to feel a little salty about that one surely he had drs as well as his ers packet and Edward just slingshots around. Oh, wait. His retired car didn't actually stop in the pit lane. It actually pulled off all the way through Sector 1 into the side. Oh, so I can tell you why he's done that. He didn't retire the car until he was, like, driving into his box. You have to retire the car as soon, like, just before you're about to hit that line. That's when the car will actually get pulled into the pits. The more you know. Very rookie mistake. Who knows? It could have caused a huge incident. But maybe because of ghosting, he would have been fine with it. But wow, what a move between these guys. And we still have more racing between them. RP Mo was actually falling behind massively. Edward's falling behind. He's maybe trying to jump into a move. No, Richie is continuously just exchanging positions with these two. And there we go. Joko's left the session. First retiree and first one to leave. And we are just halfway through the race. No safety cars or V8Cs yes, uh, yet, uh, but just a retirement in the pits. Just, I mean, if you're what? Everyone's gone into the pits yet. If you're, where is it? If you're that far away from the leader, sack it. Just sack it. So, Edward five. Tense behind Richie. 
Oh, we have a little bit of a squabble here with the people in the hard compound. I think these guys will realize how shit the hards are here in Mexico. Uh, not just because of pace, but overall grip is just might as well just race on inters. Uh, you don't want to catch the inside curve here because you might have to catch the car. Good job. Didn't see any huge mistakes so far. Are we going to see the same move, rinse and repeat? I think we are. Lock up, contact with the front right. A little bit of a shoulder barge back, just to show him that he's there. And he maintains that position, but DRS toggles back on once again for him. And inside line, let's see what happens. Oh, rims it around the outside. Fantastic defending there. Richie showing Edward who's got the pace there on the softs. Three laps compared to five. The softs just with the grip. You can break so much later, hold the line a lot quicker than those mediums. IRP Mobile's falling back because he's on 12 lap old softs. Wow. Kind of crazy that the two Haas drivers are now 12 seconds away from the leader when there were only eight before they went to the pits. Just shows you what traffic is like as well as just fighting your teammate every single lap. Isn't very effective when it comes to chasing down a leader from a different team. Potentially going for constructors compared to you guys, but yeah, I mean, what what can we say? House is probably dominating here. I'm going to just quickly pull up the constructors. Oh, uh, it's, yeah, Mercedes is in the lead on 2.63. Glitch, three seconds with a time penalty. We've only got, what, three drivers that haven't had a time penalty. Yep, three. So Mercedes is leading by only 16 points to Team Alfa Romeo. So there you go, only 16 points. And with this win, and where's his teammate outside? So uh, with Glitch staying in the 10, uh, uh, Mercedes stay in the lead for now, but only just. Our Haas team is 75 points away from the leader. So they may look consistent here in three and four, but maybe because of past team battles, they have lost uh, quite a lot of hefty points being 75 points from the leader and, th and 59 points away from P2 uh, Team Ferrari uh, With one driver being replaced with Edward this evening is 134 so 129 points off the lead so nearly their whole points uh, Total so nearly doubled and they're only 54 points from P3 so could be obtainable But hey, very unlikely so let's have a look at this hard battle here as we could see another three wide potential as we do definitely three wide pitcher quality there and with hard, hard it's just a hard battle with some mediums in there but he holds that position but that was a three wide ordeal that just looks beautiful on camera so there's your instant replay don't get confused that the, it looks like a very similar straight sector one yellows I think someone was just giving someone uh, away, like letting someone go. Shane is in the pits for his final pit stop and going for the mediums. He served his five second time penalty for speed into the pit lane previously. As the crowd is going absolutely wild here. Let's see, oh, eight tenths, they're just not close enough to potentially battle again. Coming out of the pits and straight away getting past Halal. And with those fresh mediums, he'll be slicing through and probably taking Edward in around two laps. This is when like the uh, AWS graphic pops up. It's like, hey, you know, 
easy overtake in like two laps time. So we'll see that. A better bloke showing us that he's another better driver. Three seconds worth of time penalties down in 14th place. So Davey's always keeping it clean. You might as well get a three second time penalty while I have the camera on you, just for funsies. No, you're too clean. Hope you get one though. Our leader just chilling sectors one, two. Oh, it's RP Mobile. He looks like he's collected potentially Foxtrot there. Oh, Foxtrot. But he's made a mistake, definitely. But it looks like he just spun with those media, uh, with those hards. Doesn't look like he made a huge mistake. And yeah, what did I say, Shane? But instead of it being two, it's just one. And now he has Richie in front of him. Seven tens, eight tens, he's inside DRS already. He's gonna be flying through these drivers and the top three will be changing onto softs. So, oh, who knows? They might stay out and think they can do basically another 10 laps, 12 laps on the mediums. They could pop, but they could survive, but a lot slower, just pit for softs. So let's see Shane just make once again, the easiest move in his driving career. So here we go. Sector two. That's a McLaren. And he rejoins. And I think we might have a car just come around the corner and absolutely rim him. Oh, it was close. But now back to Shane on Richie. So Shane actually didn't get the move done and he actually gets the tires absolutely spun up and Edward takes advantage of it and makes a move down the inside. And he might make a move on Richie, he doesn't. But Shane just making, oh, just nearly touching the back of Edward there. Nearly probably gonna cause him into a half spin. But I wonder if Edward's potentially gonna remove that time penalty. I'm not, I can't remember if, uh, I can't remember if the time penalty for Edward was for the cut or for something else. Yo, Yamps man, tipped $11.47, my man. Is that the amount of time that you're back from the next interval? That's epic, dude. Yeah, it's just popped up on stream. And he's also, and Yamps is now following. Yes, cheers, boys. Huge. Yamps, my man, 15 AUD. <laughs> yeah, stonks, man, stonks. Thanks, man. What? You donate when it's not FNL? Makes me want to stay here. Makes me want to stay here. I might get a contract. But we can't see here. It's going to be a potentially another three wide. Oh, a bit of a zigzag there from Edward. Oh, is that collection? No, no front wing damage there. No end plate damage. Oh! <laughs> Shane trying to stick the nose down the inside. Can't donate when I'm racing. <laughs> Preload that baby. Preload that baby. But yeah, Shane, we'll see if we're within that 20 second mark. Uh, just out of it. No, we could probably see the move. Yeah, see, he nearly half spun there, collecting that side pod there. That's a that's a half spin kind of thing. We'll do it next time. Hey, uh, thanks, man. You know where that $15 is going to go to? I'm going to put it probably straight back into... You know what? I'll put that $15. I'll put it straight into fucking Moon. I'll put that money straight into the fucking moon, dude. <laughs> That's where it will go. So we have the top three now putting into their final pit stops. Invest in moon. To the moon. So let's see, we have a huge train here from sixth, from fourth all the way down. Fourth decides to go into the pits. That's Richie, final pit stop for him. Edward still has to do one more pit stop, but Glitch and, and Shane going side by side. Absolute toe because he's outside of the uh, toe there, but he's got DRS. Lock up. Oh, are we going to see a double move here? Maybe half spin? Oh, small amount of contact there. Shane backed out. 
and Shane falls down six tenths from that exchange, but we're gonna see Glitch right up the back of Edward here on those rapid softs. Five second time penalty spinning into the pit lane. Are we gonna see a retirement? No. <laughs> Look at the dirty air. Oh, it's so gross. Now, obviously, we're only going to see moves down turn one. We're not going to see moves down the other DRS zones because, I don't know, it's too easy, too hard compared. Might as well have like two kilometers to do it. As Edward goes into the pits, but he will also claim DRS for free. So Shane will just, uh, Glitch will get to pull away from Shane as he also gets DRS from Glitch. But, oh, someone comes out the pits. Is that a Hass? It is. And Shane actually might take advantage of this as well. Let's see where Shane is. How far back is he? Not close enough. Oofed. Nice and close to the car. I don't know if the Hass came out at the line too early, though. I couldn't tell. Obviously, you only get a warning for coming at leaving the pit lane uh, too early. But I think this is going to be our final battle for the whole race because uh, as soon as our leader goes into the pits, he's coming out with a free pit stop being 20 seconds in the lead. 20 seconds in the lead. Absolute dominant performance. No time penalties at all. They can be a safety car. Pits comes out for free and still pull away because, I mean, he could fall down to fifth if he wanted to and still win the race because of time penalties. Here we go. Slight defending there. Oh, bit of a switch around there. Glitch doesn't want to wait for DRS. What an odd move. Does he know that he has to pit? But he knows he just came out of the pits. Does he know he's got a faster overall setup? Why would you not use the DRS? Why has he made a premature move? He's getting a toe from a racing point that is ghosted. Defending down the inside. Maybe he thinks he can flicked around and defend on the inside. It's just an odd exchange to not just stay behind and wait for uh, DRS. See, this is what I don't like about ghosting. This is when like you have to like know the moment. Maybe the car has to pull away before that exchange. But like Glitch has dropped down a full second from that. And he's also probably going to get distracted by this uh, back marker who's ghosted. I think most drivers do. Oh, so he's actually fallen. It wasn't really a free pit stop. No, but it's 2.4 behind. So, oh, yellow flags. Where? Oh, it's a Merc. Oh, looks like, could it be a virtual safety car? So not a full safety car. Maybe we can get a view here from Clunk here. Okay, that's a maybe a little sus. Is it not? Like that, that is, the car is like dead straight. Feel free to comment what you think it's going to be. Do you, do you guys reckon that was on purpose? Anyone want to toggle to his stream and have a look? Because you're just one turn away from retiring in the pit lane. It could have been a general mistake. It could have been a mistake. But if you're going to, if you're retiring the car like that on purpose, it, it can ruin people's races, especially with a virtual safety car. People can get five second time penalties. It can get uh, uh, drive through penalties so I think that's one for the books that's what I mean Davies just gets a drive through penalty under VAC pushing the car too early there so his race at 11th position is now definitely over so maybe if he's listening uh, maybe he wants to investigate uh, the other McLaren drivers McLaren curse when I'm taught when I'm commentating exists and they're both retired so uh, just, just don't hire me if you want McLaren to do anything so two seconds, five, uh, seven laps. Let's see, uh, it's two lap, uh, two lap fresher tires as well. So it's all coming down to this, but he's also got a time penalty, so he doesn't really need to push. But it, then again, who knows? Retire uh, people can remove time penalties if, if they're worthy. Uh, so, is there any real battles on track? I guess Jake against Davies, but Davies is going to go and do a drive-through penalty. I think what we'll do is we'll just stay on the top two.
to see if he can bring down that uh, two second margin. He's already down 1.3. Sector three. That's a racing point. Is that in the pits? Yeah, he's retired the car in the pits. Yeah, that car is in the pits, but I don't think he's retired it properly because that racing point looks like it's moving on the map. And there it is. <laughs> so one second now. Sector three yellows. Yeah, that's the racing point coming out of the pits ever so slowly. People need to know how to retire. Yeah, sector one yellows. So hopefully the the yellow flags disappear because you, if the if uh, the alpha wants to make a move into turn one, he has to actually give back the position because you can't overtake under yellow flag conditions. Fastest lap of the race, one fifteen three. So here we go for the lead of the Grand Prix. The most easy move in racing history, especially in this game, and he gets it done against the hash driver and he'll get DRS once again just to give that extra pull away he's, he's not deciding to put down overtake to extend that he's going to save as much ERS as possible to try and, and defend the house for the rest of this race uh, any other battles on track oh we have a Williams and the Merc here we go the final moments of the race, side by side. And he's forced out wide. Oh, gives him a bit of a squeeze there. Wants to use all of the racing line available. But again, don't know why you want to make a move there when you know the driver's going to have the longest DRS possible. Uh, this is kind of like a Formula E kind of camera. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Another fastest lap, and he's pulled away 1.2 from the uh, from P2. So, and without any time penalties, I think this is his race to lose, basically. Oh, but no, but uh, Strutt actually stayed in front. He defended turn one fantastically. And Davis has done his drive-through penalty and he's slotted with this battle. So battle for 13th. See what he can do. DRS. Plenty of ERS to use. He can dump it as soon as he gets past him. And I think that's what his plan is. So here we go. He's got 97% and he's dumped it early. And he's probably going to turn it off knowing that this slingshot effect is going to happen nice and early. Nice and early. Now it's all depending on if he can hold it. So let's see if he's going to dump that overtake mode while using DRS once again to extend that lead as he does overtake on he's got to probably drain it to around 30 percent and then turn it off exactly <laughs> exactly what i thought he was going to do big lock up but look how much he's extended he's actually purpled sector one so he might be trying to maybe push for fastest lap here especially seeing that he went purple and to steal that point from the leader and he's 2.4 seconds away from uh mobile right behind him Let's have a look at Jake. Next closest battle on track is Jake. Inside of that one second margin on Alex NZ. Jakey boy just doesn't have the ERS to dump to get closer, but the DRS is helping him nicely. 128, well, 328 was his fastest top speed. And maybe next lap we can see Alex's top speed, but Usually uh, the DRS will give you 10 to 15 more kilometers just by opening up that back wing. So let's look at Alex. He's potentially reaching 300. Yeah, 305. So yeah, around that 10. But 
that bonus helps and that was without overtake mode enabled. Only two drivers on the circle with no time penalties and it's the leader and, and Davies. So maybe maybe Davies can jump up a bit, but still 2.2 away from the next place, which is 13th. Alex within the points. I'm shocked that he's still racing. Uh, his, if I go and have a look at his real quickly at the driver's uh, table. Alex's history in racing is 13th, 10th, 4th. Three DNFs in a row, 14th, two DNFs in a row, 10th, three DNFs in a row. So every time he's had three, he's usually gotten a result. So he's getting a result this week, and it's 10th. What did he get fourth in? In France in the wet. So he's a wet boy. Let's see what other interesting facts that we have on the tables here, as the racing's so spread out at the moment. With our final couple of laps to go, we'll just stay on the leader as he gives us the final two laps of the uh, Mexico circuit here. So this won't give him the driver's championship so far. This won't give him the lead of the driver's championship, I, sh I should say, but it definitely cuts it down. Glitch is in the lead by 20, uh, by 38 points. So in, in Glitch's final position, I think he finishes with 10 points. Uh, tw no, 25, 18, 15, uh, 12. So he finishes with 12 points. So he still just has it. Just. Uh, where is our next driver? Where is Z at the moment? Third. Uh, he's, n yeah. Third is just on its own. Uh, 85 points from the leader. Uh, so he's just chilling. Yeah, he'll probably finish P3 the way he's going. Uh, if he started more races, though, he would have been battling for the front spot more often uh, since he's had... Uh, was we, oh, we got a slight battle. Down here. Um, but yeah, just a lot of no-shows. Uh, he missed four rounds in a row. He's missed a total of uh, six rounds in a row. Oh, seven. And he's DNF'd. Round one is a bit of a blank, but... Yeah. Clunky, another three seconds. So final lap, stay on the leader. And we'll see the confetti blast off in Sector Three's uh, stadium sector. Hey, get online, son. Sector Three's, who's had a final big mistake? Is that, is that Richie there? Richie's had a colossal mistake here on near the final lap of the race. Trying to probably defend against Shane and Glitch. Unfortunately, we missed what the main issue was, which is just unfortunate. Coming through the S's for the final times, which is 9, 10, 11, 12. The DRS zone that could have been added last game, but they were too lazy just to add a little feature like that. So we got it this game and it's evolutionary. Here we go. As he's decided to retire on lap 14 in the castle in the stadium sector cool as he's just done a dominant performance throughout no time penalties and des is our winner for the mexico grump here at round four. Oh, glitch is gone what glitch mate where's the racing point where's clunky show me a pov what has happened to glitch on the final lap He's absolutely rimmed it. No, this is really opening the doors here. The championship is open wide open now. Glitch. I know he's still technically going to finish because of a 90% rule. But it depends how far down he falls. He's not going to grab a point, is he? He's not. He's not, he's not grabbing a point. He didn't lap anyone. Wow. Glitch has bottled it. We don't have a new leader though, but the margin has gone down drastically. Instead of it just being 12 points, uh, not just 12, sorry. There's only a 13 point difference now 
rather than the points that he would have gotten, making it 25. So it was going to be a race win in a retirement if he finished in P4. It's only a 13 point difference from P1 to P2. Shane with driver of the day. Uh, well deserved. Um, I would like to know what happened, but that's, that's jokes. So two people binned it in the stadium sector as the drivers in the top three, the two Hush drivers and the Alpha driver celebrate with the champagne. So Glitch bottled it. Denzel Washington. Yeah, man. Just call him Denzel from now on. Yeah, 113.2. I don't think anyone got close in the 15s. Oh, no. Shane got into the 15s, which nearly claimed fastest lap. But that's our top 10, ladies and gentlemen. So, Glitch falls down from 4th to 13th. Richie, who actually made a mistake in the stadium sector, has actually still finished in P4. Look at the time penalties though, on the right-hand side of the screen. 669. And then we have, I think, what was it? 13s? Yeah, 17 seconds, 3 seconds, 6 seconds. So Shane still finished in 5th with 17 seconds worth of time penalties. At least you didn't finish last. At least you finished the race. That's the main thing. At least you finished the race and didn't crash in the final lap. But wow. That was round 14 here at the RPL. I have been your commentator uh, who... Super sub commentator for this evening. You may see me again if they offer me the right money here at Sky. And I'll see you guys next time, hopefully, here at the P uh, at the RPL. Our drive, uh, our winner is the top three. Congratulations, fastest lap, championship wide open. But I'll see you guys in the next stream later. Cheers, guys. Since I'm old.